made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces. Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous. Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent. We're going to be making the moves to acquire that young talent that I mentioned in the last video. This first deal is going to be a three-team trade. First things first, we're shooting Mike Adams and Kyle Parker to acquire Jerks and Profar, the young shortstop from the Rangers, who's kind of stuck behind Elvis Andrus. So we're going to help him with that situation. And we're going to move on to trade Jerks and Profar, Steve Ciszek, and Albert Almora to the Cubs for Starlin Castro. So Starlin Castro, a young shortstop. I believe he's only 23 years of age. So at least in this uh, franchise he is. I believe. And the next young talent type of trade we're going to make is Alan Webster, Nick Franklin, and Adena Hecavaria for Matt Moore. So I'll talk about why I wanted those two guys in a little bit. But you can see the deal on your screen right now. And really great young starting pitcher for us. Going to be there for a long time. We're also going to move Joe Katomer. We're going to transition him to left field. Now this was not one of his secondary positions. But... This is something that happens a lot when you do have a guy like Logan Morrison already as your first baseman. Here's a perfect example of something like this happening. Miguel Cabrera was already there for the Detroit Tigers, so they moved their top third base prospect, Nick Castellanos, to left field. So I thought that's pretty justified. Here you can see a sped up version of the player draft, the first year player draft. I will have a little uh, clip or whatever of me signing the guys, or at least with the screen of me signing the guys, so you can see them all. Um... But we got a pretty good draft class. I think I like the moves. Or I like the guys that I got. I think my first overall pick was Vinny Machado. I couldn't really decide between him or a second baseman. I think the second baseman had slightly higher potential, but I liked Machado's potential ratings a little bit more. I think his contact and powers potential is a little bit higher. He's also 19. So our first two, our first two draft picks are the ones that I really like. Um, Machado may turn into a trade asset. We'll kind of see what happens with them. We do have a uh, stacked outfield for prospects. Now with Katomer out there, we still have Christian Yellick who's coming up um, probably in a little bit. And now we have Vinny Machado. So in this episode, we're going to be going up against the Toronto Blue Jays, the team that the Miami Marlins fire sailed half their core to last offseason. In real life, that is, I guess it'd be two offseasons ago in this franchise. But anyway, I'll get into talking about uh, why I wanted Starling Castro and Matt Moore specifically. And yeah, pretty pretty much that's that. So the first thing that was big for me was they were under team control for a while. Um, Starling Castro in real life, I believe, signed a seven-year extension last August. I think it was seven years. In this, he has, I believe, five years left on his deal after the season. So he's in the first year of a six-year contract, and it's pretty reasonable price. It's about four mil each year, or it's about five mil right now. I imagine it's backloaded. I didn't really check, but. It is a bit of a hefty price. He's definitely going to have to produce. But um, I'm thinking if I really needed to, if his contract really became a problem, he's pretty tradable. I mean, it's not like I can't. I mean, I could trade him to a team, almost any team. I mean, there's probably 25 out of the 30 teams can afford a $5 million shortstop who's that good. So I think uh, that's a very tradable contract, even though it is a little bit hefty. It's not the... Uh, you know, it's not the biggest contract in the world, but I think I think it was pretty reasonable price for a guy of his caliber. And Matt Moore is a similar thing. He recently signed an extension. The one in this game is not as big of an extension as the one he signed in real life. This one, he's in the first year of a three-year contract, but each year I'm only paying him $342,000 a year. So his contract expires the same year that Giancarlo Stan's contract expires. So my goal for the team is to be a championship contender by that year. That would be year four of the franchise. I think that's pretty, you know, reasonable to expect. So that's really what I'm aiming for. So the biggest thing with those guys was team control. The second thing was, one, um, I wanted an ace for a pitcher, and I wanted a shortstop as in a guy up the middle. There's the old saying in baseball, you're only as good as you are up the middle. That'd be catcher, pitcher, short, second, and center. And, you know, Castro obviously helps that a little bit. And... We just get two pieces that are big to have. You know, shortstop is a weak position these days in Major League Baseball. And I think that I like Fernandez and Jacob Turner. But having Matt Moore as a guy that I know can be a staff ace, you know what, that gives me a little bit more confidence in, in having Fernandez and Turner be twos and threes. So that's really uh, the main reasons why I wanted to get the guys that I got. Thank you for all the suggestions you've had in the last episode. A lot of them were very hard. I looked around for a lot of them. Um, I, a couple guys mentioned Paul Goldschmidt. A couple guys wanted Andrew McCutcheon. You know, I looked, I tried to do whatever I could to get those guys, but the offers that I found were the most reasonable for me to do were the Matt Moore and the Starling Castro trades. So, anyway, let's get into this gameplay. 
This was an absolute pitcher's duel. You can see bottom three here, runner on first. We're going to get Jose Bautista to ground out to first, or to third base, excuse me. So that's the third out of the inning, and we're going to move on to the top of the fourth. After the Blue Jays got an early run off of Moore, he settled down after that first inning, but Josh Tomlin was on the mound for the Blue Jays, and he was even better than Moore was today. Gets Rob Brantley swinging on the curveball right there, making Rob Brantley look foolish. And I've really struggled with my hitting in the last couple episodes, but I think I figured something out. I've played two games since last recording this episode, and I've scored uh, eight runs in one game and then four runs in the next game. So I'm starting to figure out my hitting a little bit as Rajay Davis makes the incredible running catch right there. Well, not incredible, but really nice running catch. Rob Stanley Castro of a hit. And then the next batter in the inning is going to be Giancarlo Stanton, or Giancarlo Stanton. The 12 count to him. Hitters count, but he's going to pop this one up to the right side of the infield. Edwin Encarnacion is under it. He's going to field it cleanly for the out. So the Blue Jays walk away out of the top of the fourth inning. Still with a 1-0 lead, and this is really the where the... Uh, pitchers really just started to settle in. I mean, there's not much else to say. Kendris Morales, though, is going to hit that one to deep right field, and that one is just crushed and gone. That was honestly, like, a perfect pitch. I mean, it's located perfectly on the outside corner on that 1-2 count, and Morales just, I mean, I don't even know. Look at this. Look at this location. I guess I did leave it a little bit over the plate, but I don't know, man. That was incredible. Anyway, um, I guess I should touch briefly on the guys that I did get rid of in those trades. Uh, the first one, I got rid of Mike Adams and Kyle Parker to the Rangers to get Jerks and Profar. Adams was a guy I wanted to trade anyway because in the last year of his contract, not going to be able to re-sign him. Kyle Parker had a very good year in AAA so far, but like I said, I have an influx, or I guess I have a surplus, excuse me, of uh, just outfield prospects. I didn't need Kyle Parker, so they would have done it for Mike Adams straight up, but I threw in Parker to make it a little bit more fair. So then I got Profar, and I ended up dealing him away as well as Albert Almora and Steve Ciszek to the Chicago Cubs. Um, Almora, he's uh, actually on the Chicago Cubs right now in real life. Like I said, uh, just, you know, surplus of Alfredo prospects. Felt like I didn't need him. Um, you know, I like Almora, but he was only be potential. Didn't really have that superstar type potential. Had a lot of trade value, though, because he's only 19 years old. And then Steve Ciszek, guy that I wanted to trade just because, you know, last or he's going into arbitration, but... They say that the uh, the biggest waste of talent you can have on a bad team is a closer, and I agree with that. So I felt like dealing away C-Shack was fine, and we got you know we got a good guy for him. So anyway, in the uh, Matt Moore deal, we gave away Alan Webster, and then a heck of a Rhea and Nick Franklin. Now Alan Webster, obviously, I felt fine giving away with because he was pretty much he was the weaker of the three big pitching prospects that we had in him, Fernandez, and Turner. Webster really become the weaker of the three, so I felt fine giving him away. And then they were really interested in Hecavaria, get this, they'd actually do Hecavaria for more straight up. So I was like, screw that, that's way too unfair. So I threw in uh, Nick Franklin as well as Alan Webster. Now Franklin, obviously, you know, I just felt like giving, now that we had Stone and Castro, we didn't need Hecavaria or Franklin. I know we could have moved one of them to second base or whatever, but Hecavaria we didn't really need. It wasn't developing well with us, but he still had a lot of trade value. Franklin, like I said, we're just getting an upgrade with Starling Castro, so I felt fine doing that. So th that was just quickly me explaining the guys that we dealt away. Anyway, we're in the top of the eighth now. Here we might get something going. Logan Morrison is this one to deep right field. That one is over the Jose Bautista's head off the wall, and Morrison's in there with a stand-up leadoff double. Hopefully the Marlins can finally get something going. You just have not gotten anything off of Josh Tomlin. But Miguel Sano is going to end up grinding this one back to Josh Tomlin. And we're going to actually end up getting in a rundown by accident. Logan Morrison will eventually be tagged out. But anyway, the bright side is Sano is going to end up advancing all the way to second base. So we end up with a runner. It, you know, it would have been the equivalent to him getting thrown out of first. Not a big deal. So the point is, we didn't get in, uh, you know, we didn't move him over. We didn't drive him in, anything like that. So Katomer up now. And the 0-1 count to him. He is going to hit this one to left field. But Melky Cabrera is there with the diving catch. He would actually be injured on the play, as you're going to see right here. But Melky robs Katomer of a hit. That's rough. By the way, I did change Katomer's batting stance and stuff around. Um, you know, with draftees like that, I, I think it's okay to kind of change his stuff around. I edited some accessories. Didn't, any, didn't edit any attributes, but I gave him Ken Griffey's batting stance. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, just kind of made him, you know, look how he wanted them to. I, I think that's fine. You know, the, the draft players look pretty ugly in this game anyway. So Luis Cruz up now, the 1-2 count to him. He's going to end up striking out on this pitch in the dirt. It is a drop third strike, but the throw to first will be in time, and Luis Cruz has retired. So after that leadoff double, we did not get anything going, and we're going to go into the ninth inning now. 
one away. Rob Brantley is up. Josh Tomlin still on the hill. The 2-2 count to Rob Brantley. And Brantley is going to hit this one to the second baseman. On to first. He's going to drop it, though. So Brantley reaches first base safely. So we finally have a base runner. Now, two batters later, after Starling Castro was retired, and batter after him would be John Carlos Stanton. The 0-2 count to him, two outs, the tying run at the plate. He hits it to the deep left center field. This one is back, and it is! Snagged by Davis on the run at the warning track. A devastating loss for the Miami Marlins. We wasted a really good performance by Matt Moore in his Marlins debut, which I barely talked about, but Moore was incredible today. He gave me eight strong innings. Pitched the complete game because we didn't uh, have to face the Blue Jays in the bottom of the ninth. Saved the bullpen for a day. You know, he did all I could ask for him after a shaky first inning. Really only made one mistake, if you could even call it a mistake. And that first inning really just allowed a leadoff double. And then, you know, it was kind of whatever happened from there. It was just like a, I guess they moved him over the third or whatever, and then a sack fly. So, you know, more pitched phenomenally, and I feel bad that we lost the game for him. But like I said, my offense is uh, going to turn it around for the next game, hopefully. So anyway, this is going to wrap up this video. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Go follow my sports blog. Links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy. And as always, I'm out. Peace.